Welcome back, travelers, to your referral roadmap. This podcast is dedicated to helping you unleash your personal and business revenue potential by cultivating referral relationships. In this 10-part series, we're diving into the dynamic realm of target markets. We'll be exploring how understanding and effectively tapping into target markets can be a key driver of success, offering insights and strategies to master this essential aspect of business. Today, we're going to be talking about building trust with your target markets, Reviews matter and your customer experience matters. Athena, do you have a story for us around customer experience or target markets um, and why the reviews matter? Oh, I sure do. All right. Well, so I'm really excited about this today because I, I think we all, right, have felt where I'm looking for this place or I need this service. And so what do we do, Jada? We go look at reviews. Mm-hmm. And I want to first of all, caution us because unfortunately, sometimes negative reviews are what get put out there. Mm. So there's negative reviews that get put out there because when you're ticked, that's when you want to leave the review. Yeah. But when you're doing something great, people are just like, oh, great. They treated me fantastic. But we don't leave the review mm-hmm. as humans typically. So let's just start with saying this right now. If everyone listening to this podcast, first of all, thank you so much for being here, but Hey, let's do some kindness. If there is a business right now that you love and you're like, you know, I haven't ever left them something nice. Go do it. Right. <laughs> let's go leave positive reviews. Jada, let's just go be kindness nation right now and go leave a review. And so I want to do a two part story here. And that is, I needed a new car. And we looked at different cars. And if you don't know me personally, but I'm going to tell you, Athena is not really a car person, but my husband is definitely a car (laughs) person. So um, he is all into the cars. Like, you know, it's a, it's a joke. It's so ridiculous. However, so Jada, I had this like a pretty woman moment. And for those of you who are young enough, don't know what that is. And that that's from a movie in the 80s or early 90s. So bear with me if you're young. But where this woman went in and it's a customer experience, she went in and people thought she was too poor, couldn't whatever. And they shushed her out of the store. And then she came back because she had money and then bought, you know, they missed out on the opportunity. This is no different. The re- your customer experience needs to be raving fan esque, mm-hmm. raving fan enough that you get good reviews, and raving fan enough that even the reviews that don't hit Google are hitting people. I don't look at reviews per se personally, but I definitely go off what other friends have told me. And so, going back to the car buying situation. I had a number of friends who told me that a particular car dealership, I don't want to be ugly to the people. So this one particular car dealership and this one particular car was my dream car. Well, I'm just going to say it. I dreamed of having a BMW when I was 13 years old, poor. I wanted a convertible 325i, Jada. Like I was like, (laughs) you knew exactly what you wanted, you know? (laughs) Right. And so when I finally got in a place in my life where I could afford one of those, I was like, oh, I'm going to get one of those. And so we went to the dealership and we were looking at those and that dealership had mixed reviews, but I thought, okay, people leave negative reviews. And so I'm going to go give them the benefit of the doubt. But guess what happened? They made me feel like I was not good enough to be in one of their cars and not um, important. Hmm. And all of a sudden, this dream of wanting this BMW was like, well, I don't feel good. Hmm. I don't, this doesn't make me feel good. So I was like, okay, sorry. You know, I was, I was like sad, whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. So I went to the Mercedes dealership, never wanted a Mercedes, never a dream of mine to own a Mercedes. I thought it was old lady car. (laughs) And so, (laughs) right, seriously, I did. So then I, but but we went and it had much better reviews, Hmm. but I was like, "Eh, okay, but here's the difference. I walked in, I wasn't judged. I was cared for. 
I was accommodated. I felt it was made to feel special. All the things. And after we left, we didn't buy a car that day. Jada, they followed up. Wow. Never heard from the BMW dealership, never once. The Mercedes, her name's Cynthia. Um, Cynthia, by the way, at, in Oklahoma, Mercedes, giving you a shout out. She followed up. I hope you guys enjoyed your thing. If you, that's not the car, no problem. I'm here for you. No pressure. Just want to help. Well, guess what happened? We went back. And now, as of recording today, I have bought four Mercedes from Cynthia. Wow. Because when I go in, she makes me feel like the most important person. Mm. But more importantly, her team does. When I show up for service, hi, Miss Captain, how are you? So good to see you again. They know that I need a rental. They know I need a, a car that fits a wheelchair for my daughter. They already have that worked out. Mm. Everyone makes me feel like I'm part of a team. Mm. Right? Now, I'm going to have to do my own medicine, Jada. I've never left them an official review on Google. So now <laughs> I'm going to have to go do that, y'all. But I'll tell you what I have done. Every time I buy a new car, I post it on social media and tag my friend Cynthia. Mm. Right? Because she makes it so easy. So I want you to think about in your own businesses, what are you doing to create raving fans? And what are you doing to get people to leave the Google reviews for your company? And what are we doing for our referral partners, Jada, to give them the good review? Mm. What are we doing when we go and we stay somewhere, eat somewhere? Are we leaving the positive reviews? Because the people who are negative are definitely leaving them. Yeah. And I'm going to leave with this. I just recently was on a, a business trip to San Diego and I was staying at a hotel and um, I'm an early riser. So I'm standing at the coffee bar, you know, because I, I don't want the room coffee. I want some <laughs> real coffee. I want an Americano with oat milk. Right. And um, so I'm waiting for the barista to open. She opens this very sweet lady so accommodating and helpful the first day makes this awesome cup of joe and was so sweet well the second day she has a line and she's by herself and Jada, she's just hustling and telling everybody i'll be with you and she made a horrible experience of sitting there waiting for your cup of joe at six o'clock in the morning not because she did anything wrong into something pleasant hmm. So I went up after the second day and I went to the, the um, reception desk and I asked the lady, I said, can I see the manager? And of course they thought I was going to be a Karen, right? Oh, they always do. You know, <laughs> they're waiting for this, you know, yeah. no makeup, crazy hair lady with barely getting her coffee in her to give them a piece of her mind. We're waiting for her coffee. Yeah. And the manager came and said, how can I help you? And I said, I just got to tell you, what's the name of the, the, the barista? And he said, and I said, she is doing a fabulous job. She, and I just went on to tell him how amazing she was. Mm -hmm. He was so thankful. The other people around behind the desk were so thankful. And I just thought, okay, I, you know, she needed that pat. The next morning, go get my coffee again, you guys. All right. I go get my coffee again. She saw me and all these other people in line. And she said, you, thank you. I'll get your coffee now. Oh. By the time I went up there, my coffee was ready. Because you know it made an impact. Mm -hmm. So I shared that little story with you too. Of in a world where we're so demanding, take a minute. Mm -hmm. It didn't take much for me. And although I did get my coffee faster, that's not the intent. That lady, I'm sure, only gets to hear grumpiness. So be a light in the world. Mm -hmm. 
as we do this. So with that though, Jada, give us some stats. Tell us why. Tell us statistically why we need to care about the customer experience and our reviews. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that story that you shared about the barista too. And I just think about uh, when I was a manager at a shoe store, the only time that people ask to see the manager is whenever it's something negative. And so I'm sure it made a huge impact, not just on the barista's day, but on the manager and their entire staff just hearing something positive. So um, yeah, I would encourage our listeners to be that light in the world out there and tell the managers good things. <laughs> Absolutely. We need to hear it all. We need to hear the good and bad. We do. So I'm just going to read the statistics right here so that I don't mess anything up. Forbes wrote an article on reputation statistics that every business ought to know. So I'm going to go ahead and link that, but then want to read statistics from another source that I'm not going to try to say because I will butcher the name. So I will link that in the show notes below. But they say that 95% of consumers read online reviews before buying a product. 49% of consumers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. 94% say reviews have made them avoid a business. That's a huge number of people that are avoiding businesses based on reviews. Positive reviews can increase customer spending by 31%. Over 81% of consumers say they're likely to check a Google review first. 74% of consumers say that reviews increase trust in a company. 53% of consumers expect brands to respond to negative reviews within a week. It's a good, are we doing that? <laughs> check your own reviews. 68% don't trust a five-star rating unless there are more reviews. So it's a lot of statistics. Again, I'll make sure to link those in the show notes below, as well as the Forbes article that you ought to read. And Athena, can you just tell us where the rubber meets the road on this one? I absolutely will. But hey, you know, another statistic I didn't add in here oh, yeah. for us, Jada, that um, I read recently that I was shocked is that there are companies and competitors that will go in and lambast you. Did you know that? No. Can you explain Be what you mean by that? On your reviews. Yeah. Interesting. So I'll say this as we, as important as these reviews are as consumers, as business owners, we need to get as many positive reviews as consumers. Be cautious. I would say this, read the reviews, throw out the absolute best reviews and throw out the worst reviews and listen to the stuff in the middle mm. as a consumer. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. So, but how you as a business owner or as an entrepreneurial person starting out, how can you build the best client experience so that you can get raving reviews? Number one, right? Deliver exceptional products and services. That's a no brainer. I understand you're like, duh, Athena, that is easier said than done. That is like one of those quotes that says, be happy every day. <laughs> That's easier said than done. So delivering, it doesn't mean perfection. I want you to hear, we've got to do that. It doesn't mean perfection. It means you're consistently addressing the issues and you're working for excellence, right? So working towards excellence. Number two, create good customer care. What I'm talking about is have a heart. Get in there and have a heart with your customers and try to care. Things are going to happen in business. Something's going to happen. Something could be delayed. Trust me, Jada and I work in a home building business. If you don't think post COVID home building has been complicated and difficult and customer care has been an, a, a a work <laughs> in progress, right? But it have the right heart. Make sure that everybody on your team understands we want to take care of the client. And sometimes you'll do that, you guys, and still get an ugly review, but still have that be part of your DNA. Mm -hmm. And remember, personalize the experience. So as you are handling your clients and their process, make it personalized. Talk to them by name, communicate with them human to human. Right. So it's not, it's not going to work for me to be telling Jada, well, everybody else likes it like this. That's not going to flow with Jada, the client. <laughs> <laughs> Jada doesn't care about everybody else. Jada's going to care about herself as the client. So think about that. Are you personalizing it and think through your communication and then think through, right? Number four, communicate effectively, keep them in the loop, let them know what's going on. 
even the bad stuff, it's better to call them and say, hey, you guys, I've got bad news. Mm-hmm. Then to be like, oh, if I don't tell them bad news, then they'll never know. Come on. <laughs> right. Let's let's communicate. Or I'll wait for them Again, to ask. <laughs> what? I said, or the I'll wait for them to ask and then deliver the bad news. No one wants yeah, that. Yeah, that's not going to be good. No. That's not going to be good. Anybody ever married? Not good. You want to <laughs> stay in front of that communication loop. <laughs> if you've screwed up, tell them first, you know? Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a whole nother podcast to be the first one to say, Hey, I've screwed up and here's what we've got and get their feedback. You know, Mm -hmm. here's the, here's the other piece. Ask for those reviews, ask them, um, and ask them if they'd be willing to give a review and at different stages in the process, right? So if you have a long process for your product in multiple stages, get reviews at different stages, but you're going to have to ask for it. Um, and make it easy for them. Right. Jada, we've learned that you've got to make it easy for them Mm -hmm. and address issues quickly and promptly and don't play the blame game. Right. Mm -hmm. If a client's really ticked off, then you're not going to go in there and, and defuse it by going, yeah, but I did this and this and you're (laughs) wrong. Right. Yep. You're going to have to get in and you're going to have to allow them to yell, scream and just tell you what they think. So that's part of it in allowing that, Sometimes you uh, just, allowing that for the process. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to fall on your sword. You do have to fall on your sword. <laughs> and if you're developing a business, get ready to do that, right? You're never going to be perfect every time. Just learn from them, mm-hmm. right? I, I really hope you hear that and exceed expectations where you're able. We call those wow moments. Okay. So, you may have a product that doesn't have any wow, create the wow. There are times within the selling process or the fulfillment process where you can create a wow moment. So create those wow moments that make them feel seen, heard, valued, important. That's my favorite of all of these Jada. That's my favorite Yeah, because that is so simple and we could do a better job at that. I'm just being honest with you listeners. We could do a better job. That's something that as we grow and develop, my goal, putting it out there on the podcast, is to hire somebody that that's their entire entire job, yep. right? So if you're listening here and you own a business or you're in sales, think through your process. Where am I wowing them? And what am I doing to make that wow personal and meaningful for them? So think through that. And express gratitude to them, right? To our clients, be thankful. They give you their time, their trust. And what are you doing to tell them thank you? So think about that. And your referral partners, what are you doing to tell them thank you? Mm. And to your vendors, you guys start to get it? We go back to the barista idea. Be kind, be grateful, be thankful. It's powerful, Mm. even in business. And encourage reviews. Now, I know there are people who have... Um, give gift cards, other things for reviews, do whatever you feel like your niche market, your client will love, but encourage them to give the reviews and then follow up to keep the relationships alive. Mm -hmm. That's critical. Um, Really stay in tuned. You don't want to um, not talk to somebody and then have a new product to sell them and then call them up. That's going to seem right. So stay engaged, stay and have the relationship. So these are just some ways that you can create that client experience and hopefully then push those experiences to your reviews. We've already listened to the statistics, but I'm going to say this, start with you being the person leaving the good reviews, Mm -hmm. start being the person who is kind and start asking yourself, does my team have a customer centric customer experience matters attitude? Do I, and what are we doing to make sure that they're telling and they're becoming raving fans? Yeah. Something to ponder. It's huge. Jada, where do we go from here though? Awesome. Well, where we go from here is we want to stay connected with you all. So we invite you to join the success revolution. It's our weekly blog fueled by relationships, referral, and revenue, where you get those growth strategies straight to your inbox to take control of your sales revenue and achieve your full potential. The link to subscribe to that weekly blog is going to be in the show notes below. 
And don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to join us next week as Athena brings real talk and real strategies on creating content that resonates, serving your target audience with our guest, Tim Turner. We'll see you next week. Woo! This is going to be an exciting one, you guys.